In the last Squash for Beginners video, I talked about how to hold and grip a racket properly. Now, there were four things that we talked about. We talked about the angle of the grip. We talked about the extension, getting your finger higher. We talked about how tightly to hold the grip, and we talked about the size of the grip. Now, if you haven't seen that and you want to, you can do so here. Link is in the text description as well. Now, what that relates to do with the type of grip you put on is the size. Now, grips generally come in two types. This is called the replacement grip. It's also called the PU grip because it's made of polyurethane. Now, these are thicker and they are sticky. This other type of grip is much thinner, comes in a roll uh, and doesn't have anything sticky. Now, if anybody tells you that one of these is the perfect grip, they're wrong. Because just like rackets and just like shoes, there is no perfect grip for everybody. What you need to do is you need to experiment with how it feels and how long it lasts and the costs. Now, the benefit of the overgrip is that it's much thinner. So making adjustments to the size of the grip when you put it on top is much, you have more control over that. The replacement grip when you put it on top can be too thick to begin with. So even though this is called a replacement grip, most times when you buy a racket, you just put it on top of the one that it comes with because they're normally too small, except for people with very small hands. So you will almost certainly have to put a grip on top. Fine control will be, will be done with the overgrip, a little bit more gross, uh, bigger control will be done with the uh, replacement grip. Now, the other difference is that these are drier. These are more sweat observant, uh, um, absorbent, sorry. So if you're the kind of person who sweats a lot, but if you stop squeezing the racket, you might not sweat so much. If you are the kind of person, you might find that these are better suited to you. You'll need to experiment. I recommend trying one of each and then seeing what you feel most comfortable with. Now, the cost. This one is a caracal and it costs about five pounds if you were to buy individually. I don't buy them individually, I buy them in a box. A box of 24 cost me 39 pounds, which works out at one pound 63 each, which is a significant saving. I would have to pay postage on that, but if I buy balls and other things, then that's fine, I get free postage. Now, you can get other manufacturers. Ashuay and Babylot sell them for about three pounds. Um, and you can buy a box from Dunlop for 29 pounds. So, you know, you're only paying just about one pound 10. So if you can afford to buy a box, do it, especially if you know you're going to use them. If not, you can buy them individually. Cost of these, these cost between two and three pounds each. You can get a varying brands. This one, caught, I bought these actually from AliExpress. These cost me a one pound 50 for three, so only 50, 50 pence, uh, which is very good value. But again, you can buy them in boxes of 24 and you can save money. These do not last as long as these. I can definitely tell you that. These will last a lot less. Whether you get better value, I don't know, because if you sweat a lot, you'll need to change them more. I don't change these more than every six weeks. If that, if I were playing three times a week, I'd be changing them every six weeks. If I were coaching full time again, I'd probably change them every two weeks. But one pound sixty-three every two weeks is is pretty good. It's much cheaper than the balls that you would have to pay. So those are the those are the differences there. Now, this is what they're what they're like when they're on. And of course, I'm going to switch over to the desk in a moment. I'm going to show you. These are generally much drier. This grip is too small for me, so I would have been better off putting a replacement grip on top, but that was okay because I just needed to show you. And this is the one that has got the replacement grip and you can see that I've got the space, not very well there. Now, these are a little bit sticky. I'm gonna put it up to the, the mic and see if you can hear the stickiness. Now, if you like that, that's great. If you prefer something that's dry, that's th then the overgrip will be one of those things. There are other grips on the market. There are ones that have got little ridges down the side, both for overgrips and replacement grips. But for the for, to begin with, you just want the basic one. See how you get on with that one and see if it's comfortable. So let's switch over to the desk and I'll actually show you how to put them on. All right, so I'm going to start with the PU replacement grip. So I'm going to be using the uh, Gray's Light Blue Classic, which I'll be reviewing once I can get back on court. So I'll take this off. First thing I'll do is I will start peeling this now. Much better to have it ready now than for waiting when you actually need it. So I put that to one side. 
I'll uncoil this and you'll notice that there are two pieces of protectors. There's the white protector which protects the um, sticky part and then there is the outer protector which protects the grip itself. Um, this one is proving to be a little bit sticky for some reason which is unusual. Goodness me. All right, and that's broken already. Well, this is a live demonstration, so you really see what it's like. Now, I need to get this off because I'm going to be overlapping. Right, there we go. Right, so the first thing I'll do is I will put it on the side, not on the flat part, on the side. I don't really know why I do that, but I do. And then I start to go around. Now I'm pulling quite tight. You'll notice that it says start. So it tells you that this is the side that you should be starting, not the thicker end. And there we go. Now I'm going to be overlapping a little bit, but not too much. That's my preference. You'll see that you've got areas here that don't have the sticky part. This is where you overlap to give you a constant thickness. But you might be one of these people who like to overlap. And in fact, grip manufacturers also make some grips with a little piece of uh, foam down the middle that gives you a uh, ridge, if that's what you like. So this particular protective plastic is causing me a lot of problems. Now I can take that completely off. I'm happy to take that one completely off. Stuck to my fingers. In fact, it didn't even come completely off. So don't worry if you have a little trouble. I've been doing this for 30 years now and I still have trouble with this sometimes. It's not you, it's the, it's the plastic. All right, fine. So apologies for this. I will not take the sticky one all the way off though, because if I do that, then I'm going to cause myself more problems. It's going to be sticking everywhere. So I'm pulling tight. I'm overlapping a little bit. Each time I twist the racket, pull it quite tight, and you'll see that this hand is pulling the piece of protective cover off the, the sticky area. And just keep going round, quite tight, not too tight. I'm not trying to break, if you pull it too tight, you'll make it too thin and you might even break the grip. Now, we're coming to the end. I've probably overlapped this more than I would normally. Yeah, I, I've overlapped this norm, more than I would normally. Now, at this point, I can uncurl it. Now, if I wanted to, I could easily re-grip it again if I wanted to either make it thicker or thinner. Now, we're getting right to the end, and this is the little trick, as it were. What I want to do is I want to cut it. So I'm going to mark it. I'm going to cut it first. Excuse me just to show where I need it. And I'm gonna follow that round and I'm going to mark it with my nail here. And you don't have to do it like this if you don't want to. And I'm going to uncurl it and you see that it even takes this out. And this is where the mark is, making sure that's in the center. Get rid of that. And then I'm going to cut a straight line to where the mark was or is. Boom. Right. Now, just because you've got a bit of grip left over, don't feel that you have to... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Just because you've got um, some grip left over, don't feel that you need to have to use it. Don't use it all the way to the top. This is higher than I probably would have done it, but because it was the uh, where the grip was, and then I get to here, and it's quite straight, then I will take my piece of tape supplied by the manufacturer and I will pull this quite tight. I want to bend it a little. I want to make sure that it's really tight. If it's too loose it will come off and then I will go over. Now that's why I always carry uh, some insulating tape because I would always put that on top. And there we go. If I look at that grip, oh, that feels great. Really happy with that. It's always nice to have a new grip on. And I've got quite a bit of space there. I'm quite happy with that space. I, c I, can, I can't even make it, yeah, I can. I can make it touch. 
but I'm quite happy with that. So that's how I would put, or you should be putting a replacement grip on. Right, so now it's time to put the overgrip on. And for this, we're going to be using the Gray's Infinity 135NT. Again, I'll be reviewing this once I can get back on court. Now, one thing I do notice about this is it's actually got quite a long grip. It goes up very, very high, uh, and that's quite unusual. If I were to bring in the Ashaway Powerkill 120, uh, 110SL, you'll see that it does finish a little bit earlier. It might not seem much, but it's, it's something. Anyway, so I open this out. I always find these a little bit harder to do than the other ones. Now, just like the replacement grip, these sometimes have a, an end that you must start. In this case, it's this one because it's sticky. If it doesn't have anything sticky, it doesn't really matter. Again, I will open this out so that I can use it when I'm ready. Get that there. I will unstick this, take off the protective stick, and I will then do exactly what I just did before. Oh. All right. Now, I've got to be more careful with this one than I do with the replacement grip because it's not as thick. It's easy to pull them too tight and break it. Now, as with the PU grip, if you want more of an overlap, you can have it. I'm just giving myself a little and I'm using the, the design as a guide. That way you'll get a consistent width, but you can do it. You can overlap it much more or you can overlap it just a little bit. Pulling it quite tight, but not stretching it. So you can see there that I didn't do such a good job. So don't worry about going backwards. If you have to, you can go back a little. There we go, and we're coming up to this now. This is a long grip, as I mentioned. So this is where I'll turn it around. Coming up to the end. And I'm not going to put it all the way on just because I've got it. I don't think that that's a sensible thing to do. So I'm going to go through the same process. I'm probably going to cut it just here. So I'm gonna put the mark there. That's where I want, not a very good mark. I'll cut it, just a small cut. Then I will come around, find where the mark is. It's here, hold it here, unstrap it, cut a straight line or as straight as I can get. It should actually be very curved, but ah, I've got that stuck there. Hold it back down here so you don't lose any of the tension from the previous gripping. Pull it around again. Now that cutting it doesn't make that much difference, but I've always done it. I always feel it's nice to finish on a nice straight line, but you do it how you want. And I thought I'd open this, but obviously not. And there we go. And then quite tight, remember. Quite tight. Right, good. Now again, I might use the tape to go over the top if I feel that I need to do that. So if I were to look here, you can see that it's much smaller. Now, if I put these two together, you can't really see a difference sort of when you, when you sort of see them that way, but if you were to hold it, and of course they are different rackets, so they might have different grips. This is too small for me. Although it feels really nice, it's just too small. If I were to look at this, then, um, I could see that you can see that that's a little bit bigger and that suits me more and I prefer that feel whereas this is more dry. So that's how you put those grips on. Okay, so there we go. That's how you put the grips, the different types of grips on. If you've got any questions related to grips and how to put them on, please leave a comment on the video and I will do my best to respond. And perhaps even other viewers might respond as well if they've got different points of view. Now, this is a button to subscribe to my channel. So if you think that my videos are useful, please consider doing that. This is a playlist of all of the other Squash for Beginner videos. And this is a video that YouTube thinks will be interesting for you 
based on what you've been watching. Remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.